right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make divided glass doors for your cabinets. It's not going to be a true uh, divided light. It'll use one pane of glass, but it'll look like uh, separate little uh, panes of glass. Now, <clears throat> you could buy a three-piece set, but the problem you have when you buy a three-piece set is that it's not going to match necessarily. Uh, the rest of your cabinets. In this case, uh, this will give you a, an OG, an OG edge on your glass doors, which won't match the doors that I've made here, which are shaker doors. Plus, these three-piece sets cost you a lot of money, uh, you know, about a hundred bucks for a three-piece set. And if you've already shelled out the money for, uh, let's say, a shaker set, then you don't want to go out and buy another set of cutters just to make your one glass door. So, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, this is going to be one panel of glass, but it'll be divided so that it looks like little pieces of glass. So, after you've made your door, and I showed you in another video how to make the doors, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to make an extra board that's the same length as the longest part of your door. Now usually that would be the style, but in this case it's going to be the rail. All right. So what you're really doing is you're making an extra rail. And you want to make it wide because you have to have it safe when you're cutting because what you're going to do after you've made this extra uh, piece here is you're going to cut off five eighths of an inch. Now, why five eighths of an inch? Well, that's because your cutter bits will go in three eighths of an inch on each side and that will completely cut the board in half so when you're done you don't have any trimming left over. Now, if you wanted to make true divided lights where you'd put in little separate pieces of glass, you could do this using this technique, but you're going to have to make your, uh, your wood 5 eighths of an inch wide, or excuse me, you'll have to make that an inch wide instead of 5 eighths of an inch. And that is because you're going to be cutting in a groove on each side 3 eighths of an inch which three-eighths of an inch and three-eighths of an inch is uh, three-quarters of an inch. So that would leave you one-quarter of an inch to set your glass in. And I'll show you what I mean later. But anyhow, uh, as I said, the first thing you do once you've made your cabinet doors is just to make an extra uh, piece of wood and make that whatever length it is the longest part of your your door and the reason it's the longest part of the door is because that'll go in first and your sides will then mount onto that versus trying to mount a bunch of a bunch of side pieces onto a short uh, just just a short piece of wood The next thing I want to do, now notice that this already has, this already has the groove in and the ends are already cut to match the profile of the door itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the router. And this you want to make sure that you have your feather board set.
All right, let everything stop and just make sure you don't get your fingers in there. All right, as you can see, you now have two pieces of wood. All right, and if this were thicker, then I wouldn't be able to do this because it wouldn't cut it right in half. Once you have the wood cut, you then come over, measure the center of where you want to put it. You then take the wood and simply drop it in like that. Now, <clears throat> your next piece, obviously, will be, you'll do the same thing, only you make it shorter. And then you cut it and you lay it in again. Okay. So now, once this is once this has been done, what you have to do is you have to go over, and now you have to finish the back of your uh, doors so that it'll take the wood. And with that, I'm going to be using a 3 8 inch rabbiting bed. <clears throat> the next thing I do is I use a 3 8 inch rabbiting bed. All right, the reason it's 3 8 inch as you can see, it takes it off perfectly. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing, and again, be sure on this time that you have your good side facing up. What I'm going to be doing is taking off the bottom to let me uh, have a little room to put some glass in. All right. But again, be sure you have your good part facing up. Makes quite a mess without the vacuum hooked up. So let me get this cleaned up. In the horizontal piece now, but as you can see, it's very short, and you've got to be very careful with anything this small, obviously. So if you notice, I have my feather boards as close as I possibly can to the fence and to the piece of wood, especially on this side, because as it goes through, when it gets to the end, it's going to have a tendency to want to go back in. So I want to make sure that it's held as, is for as long as I possibly can at this end. So let me, let me cut this off and I'll get back. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like when you're done. Uh, this is scrap wood, so it's not, uh, it's not as finished as it should be. But that's the idea of how you do it. And <clears throat> all you do at this point is you glue all your joints together. Um, as you can see on the back, the corners come out rounded. For that, you have to square those off. I liked using a multi-tool, a fine multi-tool or Arbor Freight or whatever. But you can also use a chisel. So anyhow, um, that's how you build the divided light window. Now, if you wanted to do it with actual little panes of glass, as I said, you'll have to make these an inch wide because when you cut that off with your 3 8 inch uh, uh, router bit, then it's going to, uh, if, you, if you don't make it 3 quarter of an inch wide, it's going to split it right in half just like this did. So, uh, that's the only difference between this method and the other method. I like this method though because I can just use one piece of glass in there and it just makes it easier. So there you go. Good luck with it. <laughs>